What's one of the easiest ways to ruin your triathlon race experience? Chafing. It's excruciatingly painful. But the good news is, is that chafing in triathlon is a choice. And by the end of this video, you're going to be able to choose no chafing. So that way when you're waving to your family and friends on the run course, you're smiling instead of asking them where the Vaseline station is. Hey Eric with UWG Tri here bringing you a new video every week so that your best triathlon race is going to be your next race and you don't have to make the same mistakes that I've made along the way. Today I promise you no gruesome chafing blood injury videos. If you're watching this, you or someone you truly care about has suffered from the horrific effects of chafing. It can just ruin your whole race day and then it lasts for days or weeks. So that guy with the blood coming down his shirt as he crosses the finish line from a chafed nipple might be one tough mofo, but you don't get any bonus points for that, so let's leave the chafing out of triathlon. There are a number of things that cause chafing, and so then you can address them in different ways. For example, if you get dehydrated or if you have a lot of salt on your clothes when you sweat, um, that can start to cause more chafing. Uh, in addition, there's things like if you wear loose clothing or if there's skin-on-skin -skin contact, uh, if your clothes have seams is another example. So, you know, different ways you can address. But what I really want to talk about today is preventing chafing uh, from an anti-chafe product use. Personally, I had a lot of inner thigh chafing and so they said, oh, just get some tri shorts that are really tight. And it helped a little bit, but I still have to use an anti-chafe cream uh, in my thighs. And so each individual is different and you just got to do what works for you. So option number one is to apply an anti-chafe product everywhere there's a high risk area. So I'm not going to talk about a lot of specific products today. I'll just tell you what I use, but in general, let's talk about the areas where you're probably going to have chafing if you haven't already, or if you haven't done much uh, training or racing in triathlon. So from head to toe, you got to hit the neck area. So, uh, this is a, uh, my new tri kit for the year. So I threw it, put it on today after getting in the mail. I, my only regret is that I don't waste race for another six weeks. Um, so, but I got it on. And so this is a spot where this might chafe right here under the neck and would go all the way around. And historically that hasn't bothered me too much, but what has bothered me is when the wetsuit goes over top and the wetsuit comes up usually a little bit higher on me. And that has just, oh, I could tell you about a horrible race in the ocean with salt water. that was literally salt in the wound because it just burned so bad. I didn't apply any at that time here. And then also around the back. So anywhere where the wetsuit comes up or your, your race top, uh, is here and then so then moving down uh, with a, a kit like this with with sleeves I don't get any chafing anymore but a couple years ago I used to wear a tri uh, tank top kit and so it would cut off here and uh, the way my running form is I would kind of run close to the body without realizing it and so I would get chafing under my arm and so I have to apply it not like in the armpit but here kind of on the edge where it kind of rubs um, and then so also uh, there could be nipple chafing, uh, heart rate monitor, sports bra, so apply it under there. Uh, as you move down, the inner thighs is obviously a, a major area or even more uh, in the back or on the butt area. Anywhere in the undercarriage is gonna be a prime place to chafe. Uh, and then also the back of the, uh, back of the knees for some people, and then all the way down to the feet. So not only on the heels and around the heel, but perhaps on the toes and anywhere in the uh, foot area. Uh, depending on how your clothing rubs or doesn't rub. So like I said, strategy number one is just to apply an anti-chafe to all those body parts. And if you've got another area that chafes a lot, put in the comments below now. And if you've got a product that you just feel like has helped you so much, uh, that's even more important. Put that in the link below. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. So when it comes to like petroleum jelly or Vaseline, I really not recommend that. I mean, it actually works, but it typically damages wetsuits, uh, it can stain or damage uh, you know, clothing. It's not really that breathable, it's messy. Uh, so I really just kind of avoid that. And again, there's lots of products out there, but uh, what I typically use and been using for years is Body Glide. Uh, no, I don't get any kickback from them, but I probably should. Body Glide, are you watching? Uh, but I like it a lot because it's the deodorant type stick, uh, and so I can apply it onto the arms, on the nipple, on the neck, and so on. Um, now, it works okay in the thigh area for me, but I use a different product called Sport Slick. Uh, comes in more of a tube, a little bit messier, but I feel like it works better uh, for me, especially with the saddle sores and the saddle uh, chafing that I experience. I'll put a link for those products uh, in the comments below. 
Uh, also, you know, for the nipple area, there's nip guards that you can buy. I've actually found using waterproof band-aids uh, works really well. And then uh, recently, uh, I've actually been using just good old uh, tape, uh, athletic tape, where it uh, just pull a piece off, it's big enough, rip it off, and then boom, apply it. Um, obviously, if you've got any hair in this area, trim it up. And if you've got too much to do that, you don't want to pull anything from the root, um, then you know, an anti-chafe like Body Guide will probably work fine. Just experiment with it. Okay, option number two, if you don't want to use an entire tube of lube uh, for every race that you do, uh, I would recommend taking your, whatever you're wearing for the race. So whatever you're wearing in the swim, the mountain bike, the run, uh, it doesn't have to be all on the same day, but make sure you've designated time in your schedule where you're going to practice swimming uh, and exactly what you're going to swim in. Make sure you're, whatever you're training in, you're practicing in that. You've heard me say that, you've probably got annoyed by other people saying that, but nothing new on race day. And that really applies to chafing because you can uh, really experience something with, uh, even though something fits uh, and a nice walking around the house, is this gonna chafe when I go swim? I don't know, I'm gonna go swimming later, I'm gonna find out. You definitely wanna think about the three different disciplines. So for me, it's the neck area that chafes, uh, on the swim with a wetsuit, on the bike it's the inner thighs, and then on the run, it uh, used to be the armpit, but now that I've got the sleeves on the kit, uh, I'm pretty good on the run. The last thing you wanna think about is the race distance. And so uh, for a, a sprint distance, I usually don't uh, have any chafing problems uh, really anywhere. But as that distance increases, especially when I had to do uh, like a half Ironman distance, that's when I really started to notice um, areas becoming sensitive and really starting to become painful. So it becomes even more important uh, to use that anti-chafe. And you can always put the anti-chafe product in transition. So let's say you're in the middle of the swim and you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot to put it, you know, on my toes for the run. Um, you, you can always apply it in transition. Okay, hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss another video. Put your favorite product for anti-chafe below. New video next week. And until then, I will see you on the trails.